This lesson is about using the result set to update the database. You can read data from the database, change it, and write the changes back. The first thing you need to do is create a database table to work with. I'll be using the simple animal example from earlier. Now let me show you the program that updates this table. You can see the fundamental action here in the main line. The database is opened and the table is displayed. Then a couple of updates are made to the table and they're displayed using the same show table method each time. Then the database at the end is closed. There's a little extra stuff in the show table method from the previous example. The names of the columns are retrieved from the database and displayed at the top. The execute query method is called to retrieve all the members of the data table and store them in a result set. Then a result set metadata object is retrieved from the result set. The object contains all the information that you'd like to know about the result set and about its contents. This loop executes once for each column in the result set. The method getColumn returns a count of the number of columns present. For each column, a call is made to getColumnsName to return the name that you assigned to that column. The name is padded out to 16 spaces and printed to the output. Now, these names are going to have all of their letters flipped to uppercase. It doesn't matter what case you used when you put them in, they're all uppercase now. It's a relational database thing. This bottom loop executes once for each row of the table. The values are extracted from each row and printed on each line. Here is the sequence of code that is necessary to change one value in the table. First, the cursor must be positioned to the row in which you want to make the change. In this example, a call is made to absolute to position the cursor to the second row. Then, a call is made to update string to change the name in that row from duck to mallard inside the result set. Finally, a call is made to update row to send this change to the database. The result set is closed then, but this may not be necessary. A result set normally closes when the statement closes or when you retrieve another result set. Here is the second set of code used to update the table, and this one does it in a different way. This time, the code adds an entire new row. After the result set is returned, a call is made to move to insert row. Now, this is a row that is not part of the data retrieved. It contains all null values and is waiting for you to put things into it. The two update methods are called to update the string in column 1 and the integer in column 2. A call is then made to insert row to write the data from the new row into the database. Now, this call to move to current row returns the cursor to the position it held just before the call to move to insert row. In this case, in this example, it isn't really necessary because the result set is immediately closed instead of being used for something else. Now, here's what the program looks like when you run it. It shows you the contents of the table before any changes have been made. Then it shows it after one data item has been changed, and again after a new row has been added. I need to say something here. This may not work for you. It depends on your JDBC driver. Some of them do not support updating the database through the result set. For those that do, it's very convenient. But before you decide to try this approach, make a quick test. The program that I just showed you is one way to test it. Make sure the changes are actually reflected in the database itself. If it doesn't work, you might want to install a new driver and try it again. 
If you can't make it work, in the final analysis you can always do this same thing with execute methods and SQL statements.